Okay, let's get started then. Well, hello everyone. My name is uh, Juan Luis Cano. I'm also giving a talk tomorrow, a uh, short one about uh, some of the projects that we're doing. But today we're going to do a very quick tutorial on how to contribute to open source projects. And for that, we're going to focus on one particular version control system, which is called Git, which is possible probably the most widely used version control system out there these days. And besides, we're going to focus also on a platform that hosts Git repositories, which is called GitLab. There's another one, which is GitHub, which is arguably more popular, but Libre Space Foundation projects happen to be on GitLab. So I thought it would be nice to already understand like, the platform that the ELSF is using in case you want to contribute to those projects. Polyastro, my personal project, is uh, on GitHub, on the other hand, but in any case, both platforms work in a very similar way. And so I don't want to do any technique, like theoretical introduction or anything like that. We are going to jump straight to coding and typing commands. So I will be reading the chat here on big blue button and I hope that you have your laptops ready. So I'm going to share my screen now. Give me a second. All right. So the workflow that we're going to follow is very similar to this one. Um, where you have two separate repositories uh, on the cloud or some online platform like GitLab, GitHub, or whatever. One of them is the upstream, what we call the upstream. So the repository that you want to contribute to, this image is based on Atom, the famous editor by GitHub. But in case you want to contribute to LSF uh, projects or Polyastro or whatever, this would be uh, your upstream. Then we're going to make a copy of this upstream repository to our own account in this particular platform, which is going to be called a fork. So a fork is going to be like a copy on the cloud of this upstream project that we're going to use to push changes and so forth, because no matter what relationship we have with the upstream project, we will always have full permissions and full right access to our fork, right? And then these platforms, both GitLab and GitHub, have a mechanism called either pull request or merge request, which will allow us to uh, contribute changes from our fork to the upstream repository. And then in the middle of this lies our local checkout or local clone, local working copy, whatever you want to call it, which will be the bridge between these two because we will use it to fetch changes from the upstream repository and push those changes to our fork or origin repository. Okay, so keep in mind this triangular workflow all the time. We're going to uh, be based on this uh, a lot. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fork this little repository here that only contains a readme and a text file. And that repository is this one that I'm copying both in the chat and in the matrix room. For the viewers on YouTube, you can check out my gitlab.com slash polyastro slash git tutorial or CW 2020. And the first thing we're going to do is to fork this project. So if you hit this little button here on the top right, which is fork, then you will see a window like this with fewer organizations that gives you the option to make a fork to your personal account of this repository. So I'm going to do exactly that in my personal account, which is this one here. Forking is in progress. Please wait while the minions do their work. Okay, so the project was successfully forked. So as you can see now, I have 
and identical contents here, but this repository is on my personal account instead of this polyastro organization that I want to contribute to. And it says right here that this was forked from polyastro slash uh, tutorial, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that was the first step. Now, the second step will be to clone this repository. If you happen to have a working Git installation on your local computer, you're, of course, welcome to use that for the tutorial. In my particular case, I'm going to assume that you don't have it uh, installed. And so I'm going to use an online platform which is called Replit or rebel.it. So this platform is quite interesting and it gives you free of charge an interactive development environment that works for several different languages and also a Linux terminal with Git and an ability to install packages and whatever you want. So it's quite cool to do projects like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new bash project so I can start hacking straight away. So I'm going to hit this plus button on the top right. When it says here, select the language, blah, 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 I'm going to choose bash. This is not really that important, but as we want this to be language agnostic, I'm going to choose bash and that's it. If this were on GitHub, I could directly import this from GitHub, as you can see on the right, but uh, we're going to clone it manually instead. And now I'm going to call this git tutorial OCW 2020. Okay, you can choose whatever name you want. This is going to be in your account. I'm going to make this public and create the rebel. Okay, so you will see a window like this. I'm going to save some space here and increase the text size so you can see what I'm doing better. Okay, hope that is enough. And so what I have uh, this dummy, dummy file here that I'm going to remove. So you can see here on the right that I have a, sorry, who am I, a bash terminal, right? And I'm sitting on this directory here. And the first thing I'm going to remove this main.sh file that I don't care about. And now I have an empty directory. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going back to my fork of this repository and I'm looking for this clone button here. And I'm going to use this URL to clone the project. At the moment, as I want to make this as uh, inclusive as possible, I will use the HTTPS URL because I, like last time I used Git on Windows, for example, and uh, there were some issues with SSH and keys and so forth. Everything okay, Eleftherios? Oh, okay. And so I'm going to ignore the fact that you might already have an SSH key or an SSH agent or whatever. So I'm going to use the HTTPS URL here and use my normal um, username and password when I'm asked for it. And so now I'm back to this terminal here. I'm going to type git clone, right click, paste, and I'm going to tell this to clone the URL exactly here in the current directory I'm in. And so you will see that this juanlu.txt and the readme appeared here. In fact, this replit has a nice, what you see is what you get editor for Macdown and other languages as well. Okay, so now we completed part of the triangular workflow, okay? But we're missing the last leg, if you remember, which is linking our local repository to the upstream, okay? So we need to uh, add this link now. And for that, there's another command that's called git remote. If you just uh, run this thing, you will see that you have one remote, which is called origin by default, which corresponds to our fork. So I'm going to git remote add upstream. Upstream is the name that I'm giving to the remote. And I'm going to use, whoops, sorry. 
and I'm going to use the URL of the upstream repository, so the one that was in the Polyastro organization. And again, I'm going to use the HTTPS URL here. So I changed the window, came to the Polyastro repository, and copied the HTTPS URL. I paste this here, and I'm good to go. Okay, if, like me, you observe this kind of um, shitty overlap with the terminal lines and so forth, I looked for a solution, and what worked for me was typing STTY columns 200, or something like that. And in principle, I should not have any more um, troubles like this one. Okay, so now if I type git remote, I have two, origin and upstream. And now I have all my triangular workflow correctly set up. So I'm ready to uh, start doing real stuff. How are we doing so far? Did you follow? Are you lost? What are your questions? Uh, yeah, someone says copy pasting URLs into Replit doesn't work for me, but manually typing works. Yeah, manually typing it's uh, not uh, very convenient. You're right that Control C, Control V doesn't work, but what worked for me was right click and paste. You are not seeing it because I'm only sharing one window, but if you right click and copy and right click and paste, it's going to work. Uh, Pradipta says on Windows, you may need to do control insert. Okay. Uh, Boris asks, is the H in HTTPS missing? Um, I don't think so, but maybe I did it wrong. I can check with git remote show upstream. Aha, <laughs> you're right. I was missing a letter here. So let me do that. Let me do that again. I'm going to go back here. Oh my God, this thing about the lines is so annoying. Um, I'm going to copy it again. And if I do git remote, in this case, as I need to modify this, I need to do set URL upstream. And now I can right click, paste, and that's it. And now if I git remote show upstream, now it works. Thank you, Boris. Good catch. More questions? Okay, we're good to go. And so the next step will be a little bit of an introduction to git commands and the uh, statuses that we're going to use. So if you allow me for a second to visually represent what we're going to do. Okay, this this image is the one that I was looking for. Uh, where am I? Okay, so this image represents the workflow that our files are going to follow. And when we add a new file to the repository, it starts in the untracked state. So it's something that Git knows that is there, but it's not tracking at all. Then there's something called the stage area, which is kind of a preliminary step before actually committing the files. We will see what this means in a moment. So the stage area, you can think of it as, as some sort of preparation area or something like that. So the operation that moves uh, an untracked or a modified file uh, to the stage area is going to be git add. We will do a practical example. And then when we have several changes that are staged, we will do a step that's called git commit. And this is going to create a new snapshot on the history of the project. And the interesting thing about git, for those of you that don't know, is that you can traverse to the past all these uh, states and all these snapshots, and we can see 
who changed what, at what time, what lines did they change, and so forth. So this is a super powerful tool for everything that's related to plain text files, code files, and whatever, even configuration files, and so forth. And so we will move between these states all the time, so from unmodified to modified, then staged, then we will commit, and then that will turn uh, the files to unmodified again, and so forth. And then at some point, when we are happy with our changes, we're going to uh, make a push to our fork and then create a pull request. So that's how everything is going to work. And so we're going to start with some easy task here. I'm going to um, create a new text file here with uh, my name. Mine in this case already exists, but I'm going to create a juanlu2.txt file and I encourage you to do the same because then I will ask you at the end of the tutorial to make a pull request so I can include all the files that you created, okay? So I can either use the Linux terminal here if I do touch juanlu2.txt, it's going to create a new file here or you could as well as use the Replit graphical interface and click this Add File button here, it's the same. And so if I open this Juan 2 and for you, please use uh, your own name, like Boris TXT, Pradipta TXT, whatever. So this is going to be, I'm going to write a silly sentence here. Hello, Earthlings, because Hello World is just too popular these days. And so, after I create this file, if I run now on the right git status, it's going to tell me a lot of information. This git status command is essential and we will need to use this all the time. So it's telling me several things. First, that I'm on branch master. There are several branches that we can use. At the moment, we only have master, but we could create more. and We will do that later, if, if time permits. The second line says, your branch is up to date with origin master. This means that my current master branch is tracking my fork, which is called origin. And in particular, it's tracking the master branch of my fork. That's why it says your branch is up to date with origin slash master. So origin slash master is a remote branch. And then it says there are untracked files, this juanlu2.txt. And it's uh, encouraged me to do git add and the path of the file to include in what will be committed. In other words, to move this untracked file to the stage area. Okay. So for that, I'm going to do git add juanlu2.txt. As it's customary with the Linux philosophy, no news means good news. So if git add didn't say anything, then everything went okay. This is not always respected in git commands, but it's uh, very often uh, done. So now if I repeat git status, the information changed a little bit. So we're still on brand master. We're still up to date with origin master, but now there are some changes to be committed. Okay, so there are two ways I can move now. I can either remove these changes from the stage area that would be like returning to the previous step. So it would go from green to red. Or I can say, no, these changes are good enough for me. So I'm going to make a new commit. Okay. So we're going to do the latter. We're going to create a new commit, so a new snapshot. And for that, we use the git commit minus m. Then we need to open quotes and then write a commit message. This commit message is uh, something that is going to appear attached to every snapshot that you have on the repository. Therefore, it has to be informative to some extent. So use things like remove deprecated functionality or add new parameter to function f 
you know, something like that, and avoid silly commit messages like a a a a a and stuff like that. You know, also because this is going to be in the repository for posterity, so don't put anything that will embarrass you in the future. And so I'm going to use here add file with my name. You can do, you can put any message that works. Okay. Quite probably this is going to fail right now because I don't have my name and email configured here exactly. So no worries, but we will have to do this a step before. And the interesting thing about these snapshots is that they're identified with my email and my name. Therefore, if I do now git config, I'm going to ignore this dash dash global part because I don't care that much about it being global or not. This is a testing environment. But if you're on your computer and it's the first time that you create a Git repository or a Git commit, then it's a good practice to do this dash dash global. I'm going to write user.email. I'm going to write my email. And gain config username Juan Luis Cano Rodriguez. Yes. I'm not very happy with how Replic treats special characters, so I had to remove one extra either, uh, but at least it works. Okay, so now I have my email and my name properly configured on Git. So I'm going to repeat what I wanted to do before. Git commit minus M add file with my name. And now it works. It's telling me that one file changed. I inserted one new line. This file has mode 644, so normal write permissions um, without execution permissions and blah, blah, blah. And that the commit was created on the master branch and it's identified by a hash. And in this case, it's 89705, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we created our first commit, and to make sure that we did it correctly, we will repeat git status. Now it will say we're on branch master. Our branch is ahead of origin master by one commit, and that we can use git push to publish our local commits. But other than that, there's nothing to commit, and the working tree is clean. How are we doing, folks? So far, so good. I'm even going too slow, too fast. You are doing fine. Thanks. I see that Red has a status happy. That means that he's obviously happy. Good too. My status to happy as well. OK, so if there are no more questions, Let's uh, continue. Um, I'm going to create another commit just uh, to try a slightly different thing. In this case, I'm going to modify a file that already exists, this new file that I created. So I'm going back to the editor, and I'm going to add here, like, this is an extra line. Okay, so now if I repeat git status, it's going to tell me that uh, we're still one commit ahead. We could do git push to publish our local commits. And now there are changes not staged put to commit. This is a very similar situation than before, with the difference that even though the color is the same and the message is almost the same, now we have some modif notifications on an existing file instead of an untracked file. But for the rest, it is exactly the same. And I want, what I wanted to do is to teach you a little trick that not everybody knows about adding changes to the stage area, which is uh, um, partial add. So if you do git add minus p, This shows, shows a very interesting window that it's going to go over each of the changes that we have pending on the repository. 
and then it asks us for confirmation whether we want to add this to the uh, staging area or not. I use this tool all the time because I do a lot of changes, but I want to separate in a logical way all my commits. And so I like pick some files from this directory and create a new commit. Um, I don't have an extra line at the end of the file, so Git is showing kind of a warning here. So what I also do sometimes is, like, on the fly, edit the changes that I'm adding to uh, to the stage area. This is going to add to fire a Vim editor. If you're not used to Vim or you've never used it, I highly recommend you to not hit an E here, but a yes. Okay, so if you're okay with Vim, you can do E, otherwise do R, Y. I'm going to edit this very quickly. Whoops. Oh, Vim is working really, really bad here in this. Oh my god. All the mistakes are live. So I'm going to try to quit here and abort the mission. Okay. Ooh, yeah, don't open Vim here. Um, so let's go again. What's my status? Okay. So I added the changes. If I want to check, I can do git diff minus minus cached. And then it's showing exactly the diff uh, that I'm going to add right now. And so with this, I'm ready to create, sorry, git status. To create a new commit, minus M, uh, add extra line. So git status now shows that I'm two commits ahead of origin master and I can push uh, my changes here. Okay, one extra trick that I want to share with you, which is something that I use a lot again, is a uh, command to seal the past history in a nice way. If you do just git log, which is the base command, you will see something like this, which is still useful, right? It shows all the commits um, with all the commit messages and the full hash and name, email, the date, and so forth. But sometimes you want to see more of a um, more of a a more compact representation of the git history and for that the command that i usually use is git log minus minus graph one line decorate all again to i'm going to copy this command for you so you don't have to type it and so the interesting thing is that i see like i told you like a more compact representation of the history This is especially useful when you have several branches and so forth. Okay, and talking about branches, we're going to create one now, which is something that we haven't done so far. Uh, we have been making all our commits to master, uh, but in the workflows that most projects use these days, what they encourage you to do is to create a sh what they call short-lived branches. So you want to add some piece of functionality to the code or to fix a specific bug or to amend a typo in the documentation, whatever. And so they encourage you to create a branch for that change, make all the commits and all the changes that you need corresponding to that logical piece of uh, changes that you want to do and then when the your contribution is merged um, to the upstream repository then you can just go and remove the branch okay so that's what we're going to do now so I'm going to git branch first just to make sure that we only have one branch you see here 
in green the master branch, which means that we only have one. And I'm going to create a new one by using the command git checkout minus minus branch. And then I'm going to give this a short name like add Juan Lu Chu, something like that. And no spaces. Um, and so you can call these uh, whatever you want. We're going to use this branch to make the merge request later on. So I'm going to, oh, sorry. It's not minus minus branch, it's minus B. Git checkout minus B at Juan de Two. And then it says switch it to a new branch at Juan de Two. Now if I do git status, it's telling me this information. And I'm going to repeat the log command so we can see where we're at at the moment. Okay, so let's stop for a second and see what we are doing right now. We have our master branch, but we are not on our master branch at the moment. We are on my custom branch at Juan Lu 2. And you know that because this there is a pointer in Git that it's called head in uppercase. So this head is pointing now to add Juan Lu 2 and not to master. This means that the current branch that is loaded on disk uh, in my environment is the add Juan Lu 2. These two branches at the moment happen to be uh, at the same commit. Uh, so this means that they have the same information. And they are both two commits ahead of origin master and origin head, which are uh, pointing at the same commit. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to push this branch to our fork in which we have full write permissions. And then we're going to see what's the mechanism to open a pull request or a merge request in this case um, on GitLab. If you notice the output of git status here, you will see that it says on branch at Juan Lu 2. We already knew that because head is pointing to that. And it says nothing to commit, working tree clean, but it doesn't say anything now about origin. And if you remember before when I was in master, it was saying like you're up to date with origin master or you're two commits ahead, origin master. And the thing is that as we created a new branch, this new branch is now not tracking any remote branch on my fork. So I have to create it. For that, I'm going to use the git push command. And the first time I do a git push, I will need to say which remote I'm using, in my case, origin and what's going to be the name of the remote branch which in this case is going to be add one to two okay so i'm going to run this command now and it's going to ask for my name and password a quick note about those of you that have two-factor authentication enabled that's also my case and if you have two-factor authentication and you use you used HTTPS to clone the repository, you will notice that your usual password doesn't work. Okay, to make it work, you will in you will have to you will have to create a new personal token. And actually, that's got recorded so i'm going to revoke it right now give me a second and uh, stop sharing screen okay um i'll be back give me a moment okay sharing screen personal access tokens okay and so 
if you happen to have two-factor authentication, then you have to go to your personal settings and create an access token like this. Or use SSH, but for that you have to figure out SSH on Replit and so forth. So if you have 2FA enabled, I assume that you know what you're doing. So I don't need to explain this any, anymore. Um, now again, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. I need to generate a new token that will expire tomorrow and will give me read and write permissions. So I copy this to my beautiful password manager. And I remove that from view and here I'm back with you folks. Okay. Um, plus one for the 2FA replica. Oh, thanks, Carol. Um, so yeah, and now I'm here and now that I have my token, I have Astro Juanlu as my username and my password is going to be this one here. So I'm right click paste that works i promise and as you see here i pushed successfully and so well this is telling me a lot of uh boilerplate about what git was doing i'm not interested about that i'm interested about the last lines so now the remote gitlab in this case it's telling us to create a merge request for add one blah, 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 you can visit this url here and we're not going to follow that but it's a shortcut, it's a quick uh, way of doing it. You could do it. Also, I anticipate that copy pasting the URL is, might be a little bit of a mess. So I'm going to ignore it for a moment. Before going to GitLab, let's do git status once more. And you see that it's still not telling me what's the status of this with respect to the remote branch. So for that, I should have either done this, git push minus u, okay? So this minus u sets the tracking branch automatically. So I'm going to repeat that for the crowds that are watching. And now if you do, if you add this minus u, now it says branch add one to set up to track remote branch, blah. And now I do git status. And now it's saying your branch is up to date with origin at Juan Luchu. Okay, so now I'm automatically trained tracking uh, this remote branch, All right? Okay, so now it's time to change the interface a little bit. I'm going to go to my fork. And if you refresh the page, you're going to see a little button on top that says you pushed to add Juan Luchu at your fork one minute ago. And it's showing a nice button that says create merge request. So this is the critical moment, folks, because we're going to create a merge request. And I'm going to notice how many of you are listening and how many of you are following the tutorial. So the number of merge requests that I get to this project is going to be a measurement of my success. <laughs> Boris is typing. Okay, I'll let you uh, ask your question at your own pace. So I'm going to hit the create match request uh, button here. And what you see is a form. This is a necessary step before actually creating uh, the actual match request which allows you to configure a title. So you can say like there is an auto generated title if you only have like one commit. So in this case, it says add Juan Luchu. You can change it and say add new file Juan Luchu.txt, for example. And then you can say, I am enjoying your tutorial a lot. Here goes my name. Okay, and a lot of excitement in it. Um, you, uh, like, at the moment I'm displaying some extra information that you probably you don't have, like the assignee and the labels and so forth. That's because 
I like my personal account has right permissions on the Polyastro organization. That might not be the case for you, but still you will have the title and the description and a bottom a button right here that says submit merge request. So I'm going to hit that button. And oh this is actually the second merge request which means that there was someone that was uh, ah this is from uh, Joe one year ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry Joe I didn't merge this one in one year. Okay, so I didn't see your merge requests coming. Is that because you found some problem or because you're listening but you're not following? Oh, nice, Fabian. Thank you. Add file with my name and the Libre Space Manifesto. Yes. Excellent. And so I do have problems change here. Okay. And okay, for the moment, nothing else. Okay, so let me open Fabian merch request now. Okay, so now you have to picture yourselves as the Ah, uh, GitLab didn't recognize my user. Probably it gets detected by email. Oh, we'll get... Yes, we'll get to that. I'm going to close some of this noise. <laughs> Off topic. Okay, so now as the owner of the project, um, I do have this interface here that says that Fabian opened a pull request, a merge sorry, merge request. In GitLab, they're called merge request. In GitHub, they're called pull request, but they're the same. And so there's optionally some description here that uh, we don't have in this case. Here's the list of commits. So it says, Fabian authored 19 minutes ago, add file with my name and the Libre Space Manifesto. And I have uh, the list of changes here. Right, so I see all the text and so forth. And um, what I can do, <laughs> that's great. What I can do is to make comments, for example. So if I say, for example, this space is humanity's future, I notice that this apostrophe here is not the ASCII character for the apostrophe, but actually some sort of Unicode or UTF-8 uh, translation of it. Um, so I'm going to write a very, very picky comment here and say, Hey, Fabian, thanks a lot. Could you please replace this little character here by ASCII apostrophe? And then, well, I'm going to ignore this reviews part, which is kind of new, by the way, and I'm going to add a comment straight away. And so now Fabian has uh, probably a new email or at least a new notification that says that I reviewed his pull request, merge request, and, and I made a comment. So now he has the option like to say, no, I definitely don't want to change this character because I like the way it looks and it's smarter than the ASCII one, or he can say, oh, good catch, I will go to make this. So whatever happens, it's going to be a conversation now between uh, him and I, and point, and we're going to reach an agreement about um, whether the merge request is ready to be merged or not. In the meanwhile, I'm going to check if there are other people pushing. No, apparently not. And so for the moment, I'm going to assume that um, this was all done correctly and whatever. So I'm going to say, uh, never mind. It's not that important. So I'm going to add a comment. 
<laughs> Having said good catch. So anyway, I'm going to resolve this thread as a maintainer. And this is ready to merge now. So I'm going to hit merge button. Or I'm going to wow, approve. This is optional, but it might depend on the project. Some projects have like a policy on how many approvals does a merge request need to be merged, for example. And I'm going to merge it. Yay! So that was it. Merged. I'm going to congratulate my contributor as always because we always have to celebrate contributors and we always have to celebrate open source and the joy it brings. So now we have a new contribution and I mean actually removed the branch. So we're good to go. And to simulate the next steps that we need, I'm going to also merge my own uh, merge request here and say, oh, awesome sentence, you're so smart. And uh, approval is optional, we to merge and delete the source branch and that's it. So now there's no more active uh, merge request apart from this one from Joe from uh, some time ago. So I'm going to go back to Git and do some cleanup that we need to do after that. The branch removal was done automatically, says Fabian. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you, there's a checkbox that you can tick. And um, I've noticed in my experience with open source projects that usually people get the first pull request right but they get, the, they get the second pull request wrong because they don't know how to do what we're going to do right now, which is acknowledging that some changes were made on the upstream repository and accommodating everything so we're back on a clean state again. Um, and so for that, what we're going to do is to say, okay, so what's my git status? Okay, so this is still up to date with uh, Juan Luchu, blah, blah, blah. But now I'm going to do several steps. The first one, I'm going to go back to the master branch. So git check out master. And you notice that this still says your branch is ahead of origin master by two commits. And we know this is false because my merge request was just merged. Therefore, what's going on here? Git doesn't have a magic wand to know when my merge request was merged. And therefore, I have to tell it to fetch these new changes and to acknowledge them. And the command to do that is git fetch. Git fetch origin. Oh, sorry. When I do git fetch without adding anything, it's using by default the um, the remote that's tracking. Therefore, right now I did git fetch origin. But actually what I want to do is git fetch upstream. So now I have more some information, okay? And if I repeat git status now, it's still going to tell me that I'm ahead of origin master. But what I usually want to do is to make my master branch not track my fork, but the upstream repository. Okay, so for that, I'm going to do git branch minus minus set minus upstream two equals upstream master. So this command here now the, the magic because if I repeat git status, now it's telling me that my branch is behind upstream master by three commits. Okay, so now it knows that I'm lagging behind because there were two merge requests that were merged. And so I can move my status forward. So what I'm going to do it and before doing anything, a uh, word of advice, I highly disagree with the 
message that Git gives here, which says, use Git pull to update your local branch. Again, in my experience, Git pull has some weird effects sometimes because it does different things depending on the status of the repository. And so my advice Sorry, git pull minus minus rebase. Sorry. No, that was another thing. Um, what I wanted to say is instead of git pull to do git merge minus minus ff only, which means fast forward only. The advantage of this uh, approach is that you will not mess up your repository if for some reason your branch is diverged. Okay, so if you have a, a linear history that can be fast forward that this is going to succeed and if you have some weird stuff that you don't know what it is then this is going to fail and then you can decide what to do about it but at least it's going to fail early and when you're learning it you want it to fail and tell you explicit error messages as much as possible because uh, it's not so easy to use sometimes so i'm going to do git merge minus minus ff only and now, as you can see, it's saying that it created a new curl.txt file uh, with a lot of lines. And if I repeat git status, now it says that I'm up to date with upstream master. OK, so we're almost done. Two last steps before we finish. One of them is to acknowledge the fact that there were some branches that were removed both from my from our fork and from the remote so for that we have to do git fetch minus p from prune origin and git fetch sorry git fetch minus p upstream okay no news from the upstream one but it says that my add one to two branch was removed. And the last thing, if I repeat the git log minus minus graph, one line, decorate all command that I did before, you see now that we have uh, more of an interesting structure. And I see that I have this local branch add one to two. Uh, that was already merged and therefore it doesn't make any sense to keep it around anymore and what I'm going to do is to git branch minus d add one to two and then it's going to say deleted branch add one to two so now I can repeat my git log and it shows something like this so now there are no extra branches my master and the upstream brancher sorry my master and my upstream master are on sync and the final step is to sync my origin master with uh, the other two okay because you see that origin master is still lagging behind so now i will do git push origin master it's asking me again for my username and password and so I do that and with this final step if I repeat the git log you will see that now both master upstream master and origin master so all three are in sync so this is the perfect situation to keep on hacking because now I can start from a clean state and continue doing merge requests all right so make sure that every time uh, you submit a merge request and it's merged um, make sure to update uh, these changes all right all right so we got this uh, contribution thank you fabian i don't know if there were more people pushing i see that we don't have more 
So just a couple more comments um, for the usual uh, way of working when you're working with a very big project. Um, at some times it will happen to you that you have some branch or you're doing some stuff and then maybe you cannot work on it for some time or whatever and there are some upstream changes on master that you need to take into account okay so we're going to I'm going to simulate that situation so imagine that I git check out and now I'm going to go a little bit faster just to show how it works. So imagine that I check out a new branch and that I, no, not theme, sorry, that I change the readme here. Some changes to the readme. Git status. It's going to tell me that there's that. So I'm going to add the readme. And I'm going to commit new changes to readme. All right, so I'm going to push git status. I'm going to push minus u origin new branch. Just to simulate that I want to open a merge request. Okay, and so I have a new branch okay but now um, the creators of the project made some changes upstream okay for example uh, I'm here in the polyastro git tutorial so this is like the upstream official repository and I'm going to add some changes here to Juan Luchu because um, and this is another extra line update Juan Luchu and committing directly to master. Notice that I can commit changes from the web interface. I don't need to use necessarily the commands now. And also I'm going to make a very nasty situation, which is a conflict. So I'm going to modify this line and say, this line has to go first. All right. So these changes were made while we were working on our fork. OK. And so what happens now? If I try to open the pull request, I'm going to go here to merge requests. Actually, I'm going to go to my fork. Epa. I will create a merge request, new changes to readme, submit merge request. But now what happens? You see, I cannot merge it anymore. The merge button is not green because there are merge conflicts. And this is very uh, likely to happen, especially in a big project. Like the moment two different people modify the same line of the same file, there is a git conflict. And why? Because it's not obvious for Git what line should go first, right? So we have to uh, fix that situation. And so for that, if I do Git status, and uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fetch the changes from upstream, right? And if I repeat the log that I had before, you see that my branch is lagging behind the current tip of upstream master, right? So I'm going to git rebase my branch on top of upstream master. But what happens that git gives a very loud complaint about this conflict that I was anticipating already. So it's like, it's telling me essentially that it tried to fix the conflict, but it couldn't. So now it's all on my side to try to fix uh, this conflict. So I'm going to edit this file. And you see on the first part, it was highlighted the changes that were in upstream master and then my changes. So now I have to decide what's the final outcome of this conflict. So I, I'm going to keep this line first because it says this line has to go first. 
and then I'm going to put this line second. Notice that there's another way to fix the conflict, which is this one, right? So I can as well decide what to do. But I'm going to use this situation here. And so when I'm done, it says use git add to mark resolution. So git add readme.md. And now I can continue with the rebase. I can do git rebase continue. And now my status says that my branch and my remote branch have diverged. So I don't care what the changes in my fork were because I did a rebase. So now I'm going to fix this by doing git push minus minus force. Typing my credentials again. And I'm done. So now when I refresh this pull request as a maintainer, I see that now I can merge this pull request, okay, because the conflicts has been have been solved. Right? So I'm going to do just that. And we are happy again because we have a linear history. And remember that after this, I would have to fetch the changes from upstream. So git checkout master, fetch from upstream, merge with fast forward only, git branch, and then delete my new branch and push to origin master and if i repeat the git log i forgot to remove the remote branch right okay so ah because i have to do git fetch minus p origin and now I'm happy again because all my three master branches are in sync. Uh, I did a merge request, I fixed the conflict, and I got a second contribution to the project. So that's it. That was the tutorial. I hope that it was uh, useful for you, that you learned a thing of two or two. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. That was really cool and helpful. Uh, boy, I do many mistakes using Git because, <laughs> yeah. Everybody I, does. Yeah, I know I, I am not that comfy in uh, coding. I have to admit that. I'm the least comfy person on uh, the Libre Space Board. And uh, yeah, that, that tutorial is really helpful. I will recheck it. Uh, we can uh, do commits uh, to your uh, repo even uh, after the event, right? Yes, and of course, as much as you want. Uh, YouTube, because uh, I think it's useful and it's a really helpful tutorial for people that uh, are afraid of uh, Git, like me. All right, uh, I'm checking out if there are any uh, questions. Um, I don't see any on uh, Matrix. Uh, let me check out. Thanks, Fabian, for following for that uh, merge request. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to see how to teach Git, and uh, would be nice. For us. We would also be able to 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 merge. But yeah, I guess it's it's also possible in the next days uh, to. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, this is really helpful. I have to admit that. I, I will check it again and again. I mean, I'm doing so many mistakes and never clean up my branches. And yeah, it's a mess. It's usually a mess. And uh, okay, usually when I do stuff like that, I'm uh, around it, uh, the local hacker space because uh, many Libre Space persons are hanging, out, uh, hanging around there. 
so usually they are the then you know you have to type this and that and that to clean it up you did a mess again that was really helpful yeah usually like um you know git has a very bad user interface in the sense that there's lots of jargon right like a fork branch git checkout commit like you have to explain like a million words to properly understand that but there's i think there's a point when you make a click like when you understand how the operations manipulate the graph of commits and from that point then you know exactly what you need to do like okay i need to rebase or no i'm behind this so I need to fetch and I need to merge. So like it takes some time, but if you approach it like you, there's something you can learn, like mm -hmm. these abstractions, and you can get super productive with it. Totally, totally. And uh, if you start to be able to visualize the graph, uh, not only on your computer but on your head, how the thing works, and uh, understanding the processes starts uh, to have a flow. Um, Absolutely. Great. Uh, that one reminds us that, uh, ah, ah, that, that's a good question from uh, Freddy. Uh, he asks if there are any suggested the graphic tools for Git. Well, I don't use any on my side. Like I usually use like this git log magic command that I pasted to you to do all my stuff. Although I find myself using, for example, the online capabilities of GitLab and GitHub that can also represent like the graph and so forth. And that's my, my graphical tool of choice. I think people were very happy with one called git kraken. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't remember if that's open source. Yeah, I think it's... Really no, 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 it's not uh, open source. Start. It's not, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Boris Agret uh, says that uh, Git ahead uh, is a great uh, graphical user interface. And, uh, Git Kraken has turned yeah. private. Ah, oh, too bad. Yeah. Red says that uh, his favorite graphical tool is uh, the terminal. Oh, this Git ahead one, I didn't know it. And it is open source, right? I, I am not aware of it, to be honest. Let me check. Uh, license, MIT, awesome. Oh, hmm. So thank you for that. I'm pasting well, that the- That sounds interesting. Um, and it's in GitHub, Git ahead. So yeah, mm -hmm. worth checking out. I read my favorite graphical tool for Git is the terminal. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> ah, so to us, Git.org uh, is suggested by Fabian, right? Ah, to, to us. And it, this is for Windows, right? Ah, Windows. Yeah. Is this yes, open source it's or? Windows. It's open source, but uh, I can't say anything more about it. Uh, uh, except that it's for Windows. Yes, it's for GPL. Okay. I never, have, never used it in the last, the last two years. A Windows machine to run it. Oh. This one is on GitLab. So, I like yeah, for... yeah, Red says that it works great on Windows, actually better than Windows. <laughs> Come on, don't make fun of Windows. It brought Linux to the desktop, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The year of Linux in the desktop was 2020. <laughs> what are we going to make of 2021? What I like with git k is that I can see my commit history for file or directory. Oh, nice. That's nice. Okay. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I always tried different uh, graphical user interfaces, and then at some point I went back to the terminal. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the effect is I want to know what's happening in the background, and I want to know what 
what comments run behind. Not that I remember all of them, but it's just, uh, I don't know. You get the feel that you control stuff. Yeah, man. I mean, the false <laughs> sensation that you control stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say so. I take my email with, with moot, so don't don't take my uh, my my saying as an advice. <laughs> <laughs> can you share me now? Sorry. Yes, can I? Um, Freddy. Yeah, Freddy's here. Yeah. Yeah, just use also terminal, but sometimes when things are complicated with the graph with branches and tags, and I'm not sure it's it's nice to have a graphical tool. Oh, like what I do use a graphical interface for though is for fixing conflicts, because conflicts sometimes are a real mess, and and I admit that I do not fix that on the terminal. Uh, very often, only when they are trivial, you know, but even so, for example, my editor of choice in Python, PyCharm, has very good Git integration, and it has a magical tool to resolve conflicts. It has like a magic wand that really? fixes the easy ones for you. Yes, like I'm in love with it. I sometimes open PyCharm only for that. And I, I've heard, this is PyCharm Community Edition, right? So no need to pay. And then there's one open source tool that it's called Mailed, that at least works on Linux. And it's also nice to visualize like the three version of the files and fix oh, yeah. the conflicts. And probably there are more. Um, awesome. Uh, people have started drawing again. 